and travel. Now, a lot of times, if you guys have come to some of my shows, I don't know why it works out, but about 90% of the time, the day after one of my shows, we're going on a major trip. In this case, not so much. We've got to get on that, hunt. But we got a couple weeks till our next trip. But we just got back from a little trip, visiting my family. And there always seems to be, most times, some story when you travel. That's very interesting, right? I, nothing so much this time other than if you have heard my family. We don't have a family tree. We have the family forest. So at this, at this family reunion was like my, you know, my stepdaughter from an affair that my second husband had before I knew him and her daughter, who's my granddaughter. And that's how our family goes. It's, it just goes on and on. It doesn't matter how you're related. You just come. So if you guys ever want, we're fun, you can join in. We play lots of games. So, but there are a lot of times stories. So a, year, a little over a year ago, we went to West Africa. And we went on a cruise in West Africa. And people say, why? Why, honey, Don, why? Well, because Don wants to get 100 com countries under his belt. And they gave him 85. So we went places where nobody ever wanted to go and probably won't go back. But, but it was an interesting <laughs> trip. And um, as some of you know, um, before we were taking this trip, I'm like, some, anybody says, want to go on a trip? I'm like a dog, I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go anywhere, I don't care. I don't think it through, I go, yeah, I'll go, I'll go, yeah, sure, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go. And um, my daughter says, mom, does it not concern you to be in the waters of Africa that there could be pirates? I said, oh, I never thought of that. I said, oh, I, mean, I don't know. So well, I said, Don, let's ask the nice people at the cruise line at Silver Sea's piece of shit cruise line. And um, so they said, no, you don't need to worry about pirates. They're only on the East Africa side. I said, oh, honey, you don't need to worry about pirates. She goes, mom, I don't want you to come back dead from this trip. I said, I don't either. So I said, don't worry, daughter of mine. It's fine. They told me it's fine. So we get to Ghana. Is that how you said Ghana? Yeah. Yeah, we get to Ghana. And um, uh, perhaps the first clue might have been when we saw the cruise ship and the back of it had special big big pieces of iron that had a water cannons behind it. And so we board the ship and it's, it's, it has about 200 people on it. And we did the muster. You guys know muster, what that is on a, a cruise ship. I love that thing. We all line up and they say, if the, if the ship sinks, you're gonna go to this certain room and we're all gonna maintain our civility, right? You know that, that you fucking know, nobody's gonna go up to the fifth floor when you're on the, this floor to go over here to go there. You are just grabbing whatever and you're going, right? You're going for, I mean, the whole thing is just a stupid thing. So, so we do that to begin with. And what I always hate, the bigger the ship, the worse. There's that person from Michigan that everybody's standing around waiting, it's supposed to start at five, and at 5.20 the guy from Michigan comes in with his brown sandals and white socks and his green that they were supposed to cut off a long time ago. And we've all waited for him to get his last pina colada. So we go to muster, we come back, and on our bed is a nice little letter that informed us that we were in a high piracy risk area. <laughs> and that um, it told you what to do if the pirates come. Number one, we could not open our drapes on our balcony that we paid $5,000 extra for. Wow. And we could not go out on our balcony that we paid $5,000 extra for per person. And um, you couldn't go up on the top deck, which was one of the four restaurants, because you couldn't be up there because they'd see us and they'd know we were there then, and they'd kill you. But if the pirates did board the ship, the advice was that you come out to a common area and get down on your hands and knees and put your head down. So I looked at Don and I said, this is bullshit. If this happens, I'm hiding under the bed. And Don goes, honey, I can't fit into that bed. I said, that is not my problem. <laughs> okay, honey, I, I'm sorry. I'm hiding under the bed, and here's what you do. You go out there, put your little head down, and when they say, is this everybody from suite 604, you say yes. And if they say, where's the other lady on the registration, you tell them I jumped. Okay, you were so, I, she was so frightened, she jumped. I, I didn't know what to do. I just came out of here and put my head down. So, you know, you have to take one for the team sometimes, right? And that's what we have our men for. So, yeah. So that was interesting on that, yeah, on that trip. So then one of the islands we stopped at, I can't even tell you where they were because they all looked the same to me. And, but we were the first cruise ship to ever go into this area. And we had to tender in from our little 200 person ship. 
And we tendered in, and so the whole village was out there, because this was a big thing. We were the first people to come and do this. And they had their little handcrafts out to sell, and we had a resort that, they, they told us we could use the rooms free. I don't know what we were going to do in those rooms at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Very strange. But um, anyway, and they had little drinks and things I was afraid to eat. But um, So there we were, and there was a young man walked up to us, about 14, and he wanted to give us a tour of his village. And, you know, he's smart. He knows he's going to get a nice tip that's probably worth more than his parents made in a month. And so he wants to flatter us. So, so he's trying to get us to use him. He says, oh, ma'am, you look so much like Queen Elizabeth. You remind me so much of Queen Elizabeth. And I thought, oh, that's so sweet. I, I didn't have my tear on. And Don leans over and says, honey, she's 92. Don't do that flattered. Always burst in my bubble, the guy. Always burst in my bubble. And so we go on this tour with this young man, and even like the chickens were scrawny. And he kept saying to us, please just take me home with you to America. Please take me on your... He goes, I live here in abject poverty. How sad is that? I mean, he was really, he was so sad. But I, I, we're going to go back in 12 years. He will be the chief of the village, I know. And then, and then his friend joins in partway through the tour. And then we, Don gives him a, a most generous tip. And he runs up to us about half an hour later. He goes, I shared that with my friend. Can I have more money? And Don, Don gave it to him. But, you know, it, it was just so funny. But you never know what you're going to see on these trips. So another cruise that I went on a few years ago, a lady in my neighborhood put together a bunch of, like, 85 people to go. And in my cabin were four women. Anybody been on a cruise? You know, now you think that's a shit show? Okay, four women in a cabin. We weren't in a suite, we were in a cabin. We were going the cheap way out. I'd rather do that than the pirate ship, which by the way, I forgot to mention, Silver Seas. No air conditioning for seven days. That's a whole other story. The air conditioning was out on the ship while we had our grapes shut. Yeah. So, um, well, I don't know what you want for $22,000. So anyway, so we were on the, you know, to come and to go, to go free, and I think it was 600 bucks for that cruise, and we had a lovely time, and air conditioning. But on that, it was one of the last days we were at sea, and um, we're sitting there by the pool, and all of a sudden we see a flurry of activity. And it is people that work for the cruise ship dressed in hazmat attire. <laughs> I didn't know if E.T. had been found. That's what it looked like. It looked a lot like E.T. had been found. And so um, we're like, what's going on? And they're putting caution tape, literally, like across the front of our lounge chairs. Caution tape. And I'm like, what the hell? And I look down, and there's a little plop of brown. And another plop of brown. And there's a bathroom over in this direction, and the plops got more frequent and larger until there was a big plop of brown in front of the bathroom, and they were cleaning this up. No one was allowed to leave their chairs. Now, I could have stepped around and through between, but no one could leave. So the hazmat team, this was serious stuff. I mean, it was like, it was like the scene from E.T. where they were doing all the stuff. And um, I'm thinking to myself, now, you know they have these drink packages where you can drink all you want. And my niece who was with me is one of those who, she wants to get her money's worth. She starts about 8 in the morning with the <laughs> breakfast cocktails, and she gets, but I'm thinking, what kind of special drunk do you have to be that you are so fucking drunk at 10 o'clock in the morning that you are shitting on the deck and can't get to the bathroom? you got to be some kind of special drunk to be that drunk at that hour. You know? And um, so I thought that was... Yeah, it's what, but you know, it gave a new meaning to that word poop deck. <laughs> it was, yeah, we were just trapped in our chairs until hazmat cleaned it all up. That was pretty bad.